Previously on this channel, you came with me as I started my journey in Fort Lauderdale as I left Port Everglades aboard the Celebrity Reflection. Keeping in line with the theme of my aviation videos, I focused heavily on situational awareness and having a comprehensive understanding of the where, why, and when before I headed inside for dinner. Let's pick up where I left off. Cuba was not on the itinerary of this cruise, yet our route to the Cayman Islands meant a circumnavigation of the western side of this island nation to get to its southern waters. What a rare place for an American to see. It's going to be a great day at sea today. It is both a beautiful and warm day at sea. And the great weather is allowing for some great views right from the balcony of my cabin. As soon as I woke up, the first thing I did was turn on the TV screen because I wanted to know exactly where I was. Knowing that the Cayman Islands is south of Cuba, I knew it would be where we are, but it was great to get precise information, like our exact heading of 241 degrees to the southwest at a speed of 21 knots. And we can see that we're just about as close as possible as we can get to the island of Cuba. It's interesting how, despite being so close to flat Florida, there's rugged terrain over there. But just as I thought we could not get any closer to the island nation of Cuba, I saw the 570-foot-long container ship Hansa Salzburg, a Portuguese-registered vessel traveling between us and Cuba, coming from Puerto Barrios in Guatemala, going to where we came from, Port Everglades. It's nice to see how we share the water with others. And high up above us is an air transit Airbus A330 flying from Toronto to Cancun. There's traffic all around us despite the peaceful atmosphere of a day at sea. It's getting a little bit late and I don't want to miss out on eating, so I headed to the Celebrity Reflections Buffet for the first meal of the day, breakfast. Rather than go to a formal restaurant with table service, the buffet fit me just fine on this beautiful day. Plus, there's more action outside of the ship. I went to the opposite side of the ship to see the Explorer of the Seas on its day at sea from Costa Maya to the port of Miami. One of the great things about being on a cruise ship is the ability to easily move from the port side to the starboard side and vice versa very easily. You can't do that on an airplane with an assigned seat and a full aircraft. Here on the Celebrity Reflection, there are plenty of places to enjoy the view while sunbathing, dining, or participating in activities. And today's a beautiful day for all of that. But there's a lot to explore inside the Celebrity Reflection too, and I'll be bringing parts of it to you throughout the series. Cruise ships can be famous for their grand elevators with views, and that's the case here as we descend to a lower level to find cruisers engaged in a dancing activity with the staff. Let's go to the concierge desk area, which is part of the class that I booked. My room is part of the concierge class, so I'm at the concierge desk to see if there's anything special they can offer. So there's just a few benefits with concierge, including some sparkling wine in the room, binoculars in the room, umbrellas, not that much, but it is nice to have. There's so much to do, and I like to eat, so let's go to the Opus restaurant for a lunch that's included in the price. I chose a window seat, of course, and enjoyed the offer. We've made significant progress, and during lunch we reached the western part of Cuba, which meant a large left-hand turn, and if you're on a ship and want to see which way you're turning, a good idea is head to the aft section to see the wake. The left turn can be seen in the ship's wake in the water. And just for a second verification of this, I went to my room to see the map, and sure enough, we had made a gradual and long left turn around Cuba's west shore. Although sometimes it may seem like it, we're definitely not alone out here. Back in my cabin, I could no longer see Cuba as we moved further from its coast, but we're not alone out there as I spotted the Panamanian-registered Darrow 93, a 349-foot-long cargo ship that started its journey up the Mississippi River in Darrow, Louisiana, and will end in Port-au-Prince, Haiti. It looks like the southern route around Cuba is more efficient for this vessel. I just love getting 180-degree views from my cabin's balcony. It's great to be able to see ahead and behind. We're now headed directly toward the Cayman Islands to the southeast, and it's getting darker out. 
Canopies were delivered to my concierge class cabin, and as I watched the sunset, that meant that dinner time is approaching, and it's time for a more formal dinner this evening. That's right, it's dress-up night, which on week-long cruises often occurs on the first sea day. I waited for dinner time at the Martini Bar on Deck 4, which is right outside of the Opus restaurant where dinner included with the price will be served. This was a lively place, and it provided a great atmosphere to work up an appetite. This part here is called Crush, with ice all over the place, and upon touching the ice, I felt it was freezing cold. Crush and the Martini Bar are alongside the open area of the Grand Foyer, and I took in the sights and sounds of that area, but before I knew it, it was time to head to the aft, toward the Opus Restaurant, in which I'll be dining tonight on its second level. Here's the menu. I was at a table of five, so we had a lot of food to consume this evening. After a long day at sea, it really, really filled me, and eventually I felt only one feeling, the feeling of tiredness. So I retreated back to my stateroom, and I turned on the TV to see that we've made significant progress in the southeast direction toward Grand Cayman. We'll be there when I wake up. It's time for a nice rest. See you tomorrow. By the time I woke up, we were already anchored at Georgetown Grand Cayman in the Cayman Islands after traveling on a southeastern heading overnight. There's no dock in this port, and we're now stationary in open water, and we need to take a small tender to the shore. We're in a precise location assigned to us because we're not alone. Grand Cayman is a popular port of call today, and we'll see more ships once we disembark from the reflection. The bridge always keeps an eye out for traffic around us as a rainbow appears briefly in the sky. What a magnificent and welcoming sight. Now, I only hope that these clouds don't bring rain for us and the many cruise ship passengers that are arriving this morning. There are a lot of activities to do. Back in my cabin, the map on the TV screen verifies my location and the ship's forward cam lets me know how far away from the shore we are. It's time to head off the ship and it's going to be a great day. Good morning from the Cayman Islands. Again, we need to leave this ship by boat today. So let's tender on over to Grand Cayman. I worked my way over to the departure point that I was assigned to, then followed the signs to the gangway to exit this 1,047 foot long ship. Boarding the tender can be a challenge for some, as small vessels are subject to waves, and in this case we are in open water, but the water is quite calm, making the boarding process rather easy today. This is not my first time in Grand Cayman, and I'll tell you that I've been on cruises where this port has been cancelled due to rough water creating a risk of transfer from ship to tender. I took a seat on the lower level here. Okay, we're on the tender now. We're going to head over to the island. Just as if I were on a plane, I opted for the window seat, although the sides of the small boat were open with no windows at all. From here, I observed the duties of a ship worker removing the lines of the tender, and we were underway for a very short ride to the dock at Georgetown. For the very first time, I had an unobstructed view of the celebrity reflection. Registered in Malta, this ship was launched in 2012 after being built in Germany. But we're not the only ship out here today. There are several that are already docked in their assigned positions, like the 129,000 ton Disney Fantasy. At 1,114 feet long, she's part of the Dream Class and was built in the same place around the same time as the Celebrity Reflection. Here we can see tenders tending to the Fantasy's vacationers. It's going to be a busy day in the Cayman Islands. Here's the Norwegian Escape, also built in the same place around the same time. It's part of Norwegian Cruise Line's Breakaway Plus Class. 
Next up is the Helsinki-built Carnival Pride, which was launched in 2001. At 963 feet, she's part of Carnival's spirit class of cruise ships. All of these ships means a lot of tourists in Grand Cayman today, and a lot of back and forth all day long tender service. Passengers can leave and come back to the ship at their leisure, but they must be back by the all aboard time. We're docking now at the Royal Watler Terminal, which can only accommodate small boats like the one we're on now. I always enjoy watching the docking process. We're in open water, and it's never easy to get a boat of any size perfectly aligned with the dock, but it was accomplished with success, and once securely tied to the dock, passengers disembarked from this tender, which was a double-decker. Tenders always vary in size. Well, it was a nice and easy experience getting from the large ship to the small tender. Let's explore Grand Cayman. Welcome to Georgetown. This is the capital city of the Cayman Islands, an island nation of three islands. We're on Grand Cayman today. Georgetown is the largest city, and it's nice that the tender dock deposits you right in the middle of all the action. The city is known for its many banks and trust companies, as well as shopping and dining. I'll be shopping and dining today, but I'm getting distracted by November 615 JB. That's the tail number of this JetBlue A320, painted in red to honor the Fire Department of New York City. It's on approach to runway 8 at the Owen Roberts Airport, and it's coming in from JFK. Nice! This is the second time I'm showing this exact plane on my channel. If you know which video I featured it in before, then you know this channel very well. I'm getting hungry, so I'm going to try a local restaurant for some seafood on this island. I proceeded along the main street and route to lunch, enjoying the lively sights of the city. I want a restaurant with a view, of course, so I'm going to dine at Guy Harvey's Boathouse Grill, a seafood restaurant on the second floor of a building alongside Church Street on the water. While on cruises, I typically will go to the ship for lunch, I thought I'd try some local food. Guy Harvey, a marine artist, lives right here in the Cayman Islands, and his restaurant was fantastic. The food was perfect, but the star of this place was the view overlooking the mooring area where all the cruise ships were docked. After a really good lunch here in Grand Cayman, it's time to head back to the ship. It was a leisurely walk back to the Celebrity Reflection, passing by many stores. There's just so much more to do than this here, but since this was a repeat visit for me, I just remained in the downtown part for today's stop. Back at Fort George, there's time for some last-minute local shopping before joining the queue for the tender. With very frequent service, the wait times are always very short. And, with this being another double-decker tender, many passengers can be accommodated at once. The longest wait time was just for loading the passengers. As always, I want a great view, so I took a seat on the side of the ship under the protection of a ceiling from the top deck for the journey back. We're lucky today. The sea is calm, which makes the process much easier. Whether on a cruise ship or on a small boat, it's always an exciting feeling while leaving the dock. It's like pushing back from a gate at an airport. The route back was quick and afforded me a final opportunity to see the other cruise ships unobstructed. The next ports of call will allow for our ship to use a dock rather than tender, so this is a unique opportunity. We're now arriving at the Celebrity Reflection, and we need to be aligned perfectly with the entry. Today, there are two entryways being used, which also speeds up the process. I'm good with timing, as I didn't spend too much time ashore and got back to the ship well before the all-aboard time. The all-aboard time is the last time one can come back to the ship before the tender service ends, the engines are started, and we head off for our next destination. Back on board, the captain made an announcement to keep us all situationally aware. And at this time, as usual, I'll give you a brief overview of my captain's log. Day three of the cruise. And uh, we are on the final steps of our uh, navigational checks in order to depart to our next port of call, Cozumel in Mexico. Cozumel is uh, located 333 nautical miles or 383 land miles west northwesterly of our current position. Once departed from uh, Grand Cayman, we will set to west northwesterly courses. And I plan to arrive to the approaches of uh, Cozumel tomorrow morning at about 10:15 and have the vessel uh, safely alongside no later than 11 o'clock. And sunset tonight will be at uh, quarter to six, 5.45 p.m. We're now underway and headed to the west-northwest as the captain indicated, and I'm enjoying walking around the ship. We'll be in Mexico tomorrow. With cloudy skies, I retreated to the interior portions of the ship to explore and take in a snack. There's always food available on a cruise ship and you can never go wrong. Well, I hope you've been enjoying the video so far. We are on our way to Cozumel now.
It's getting darker outside and I'm back in my cabin to enjoy the view and turn on the TV screen to verify our west-northwest heading to the island of Cozumel. It's a straight run and during the journey at night there was very little to see outside so I decided to change things up and dine at a specialty restaurant this evening. Deck 5 is the deck with lots of entertainment and at the rear of the ship there are many specialty restaurants and this area was by far my favorite part of the ship. It really contrasted with the rest of the ship and took me away to a unique environment with a cool vibe. Even if not dining in one of the specialty restaurants, this is a great place just to hang out or visit a bar here. Tonight I'm having dinner at Tuscan Grill. What a beautiful entranceway to this restaurant. I really enjoyed it, but despite this, I asked for a window seat. And since the restaurant is at the stern, I was able to see our ship's wake from the rear window, which was partially lit. I then turned my attention inside as my food arrived. It's party time on the upper outdoor decks and I joined a lively outdoor celebration. After that, it was back to my cabin to watch the moon's reflection on the water and of course to check the map on the TV to see where I am and we're moving along just where we should be towards Cozumel, Mexico, where we'll arrive tomorrow morning. Good night from the Celebrity Reflection and see you tomorrow in Mexico.